and C is our PIC 16 FA double seven A connected to this TTL two or you can call it like RS four eighty five to TTL converter and then over there we have the RS four eighty five to USB device going to the computer. Now guys, uh, let me show you the code. In the coding over here we have this code like we are having a a string which will store the data coming from the computer then we initialize the UART port because TTL means that we are connected to the UART port to RS485 then guys this over here we have the command to check if our read buffer is empty if it's empty then it will read the text coming from the computer whatever is read it will write it back so that is how it's gonna work now guys uh, let me just show you the demonstration I go to the tool then open the USART terminal in the USART terminal okay I click on connect I send something I send like alpha and okay the delimiter I send see alpha is received I said beta beta is received now I give some space I send see whatever I send is received at the same time hello guys welcome to learning microcontrollers in this video I will show you how you can interface a PIC16 FA77A microcontroller with an RS485 protocol. So guys, the RS485 protocol has a range of 300 meters and this protocol as we know is a half duplex protocol. Half duplex mean it can either send or receive at one time, but it cannot do both simultaneously. But this transmission and receiving is at such a high speed that is 1.2 AB per second such a high speed that it seems like it is doing it simultaneously so let's see how much good this is so unlike the previous tutorial the first tutorial of this series we only send the data from the PIC to the PC but in this tutorial we will send and receive data to and from the PC over the RS485 protocol so let's get started so guys this over here is our PIC16 FA77A microcontroller having 40 pins it's a DIP version this is our RS485 to TTL module so this module is responsible to convert the RS485 protocol to the UART format which can be read by a microcontroller. If you directly connect these two pins A, B and ground with the microcontroller, you will not be able to read it. Now guys, this module, the one we are using right now, in my previous video, video I compared the two, this one and another module. This one have RX, TX, VCs and ground pins because it have this IC called auto flow control. So you do not have to set the mode for transmitting or receiving side it will automatically do that so let's do the connections so guys the ground pin will go to the okay we have ground pin rx tx vcc this is already labeled as well and on the left side we have ground this is in chinese but it is a ground then b negative then a positive now guys let's do the connections ground goes to the ground of your pick 5 volt to the 5 volt remember this module also operates at 3.3 volt if your microcontroller operates at 3.3 volt then no worries this will automatically work at 3.3 volt so you will just connect it to the vcc of the microcontroller now the rx will go to the pin number c7 that is the rx pin of the pick now this is a thing to be noted here you cannot see any microcontroller or a programmable ic over the module so this means that rx goes to the rx and tx goes to the tx so rx of your rs485 to TTL auto flow control module will go to the pin number 26 that is the RX pin of the PIC16 FA77A's UART port and the TX pin will go to the pin number 25 of the PIC16 FA77A that is the PIC transmission pin. Now guys in this way the connections are completed. Now guys this over here is our RS485 to USB module this will be used to send the data to the computer if you have an arduino here then you will need another of this module and then you will send the data to that or if there is a microcontroller then you will use the same module to reconvert it back to the ttl but in our case we are sending or receiving data from the computer so we will use a usb2 rs485 device there are various type of these available in the market this one is also available this one also does the same so you may use any now guys let's label the device this device have a b ground ground and 5 volt pin now guys you will remember remember that a b and ground pin are common in all the rs485 to usb2 device whichever the device you use these three pins will always be there a b and ground now to connect it this is very simple ground goes to ground a goes to a b goes to b, b. now these three wires are the twisted pair you just twist them together and you can extend it up to 300 meters so the range of the rs485 communication is 300 meters so if this is a sensor or a microcontroller or a, even a computer then you may 
be away at 300 meter it will still work fine so now guys this was our circuit let me introduce you to the hardware this over here is our hardware as you can see this is our pic 16 f 7 microcontroller there we have the picket 3 and then there we have the uh, this module called rs485 to ttl module this one and then there we have the rs485 to usb module then these three wires are the connections the connections are as shown in the presentation they can be like 300 meters long twisted pair wires so it's simple as that now guys let's go to the micro c to start the programming so this is our micro c for pick let me zoom in so you guys can see better now go to the left to the file click on new new project if you don't have the software i have a, also a lecture on this as well how to download and install this you may go through that to get the software now guys a new project wizard pops up click on next write the name of the project i write okay rs485 to pick section f double seven eight tutorial half duplex demo okay now this is the path where your files will be created select like the microcontroller i have pic 16 f 7 a and the crystal i have is 20 megahertz i click on next and finish so guys i press uh, ctrl s or click here to save your work before you do anything else save now guys as you know that rs485 module is connected to the uart port of the pic so we need to initialize the uart port go to the right in the micro e library expand it you get the system libraries expanded go down there you have this uart library check mark this expand it there you have this command called uart init this one double click on this this window pops up and at the bottom you will see that this is the command uart1 i9600 now go back place it in the one time loop like this now this border this is the command which will initialize the uart port of the pic 16 f 7 a and this is the border and now this is important whatever the border you set here you have to set the same at the receiver end like in our case the receiver end is the pc so we will need to set the same border to receive the data now i also give some initialization delay not necessary but i always suggest you give it in the one time loop now guys there we got the initialization delay now the next thing is since we only have an rs485 module in this circuit so that is all we need now we can go to the forever loop i write here while one forever loop starts here and ends here like this now guys inside the forever loop first of all we need a command to read the data coming from the computer then we will send the same data back so that's how we are gonna demonstrate it so once i send something from the computer it will read it and then it will send the same data back so that's just let's do that now go here and here you have this command uart1 write text double click on it inside it you have these commands it says that this is the command to see if the read buffer is available that's great now this is the command to read the text uart1 read text command and read the text until you do not get this delimiter called ok and try 10 times that's that's a good so we need all these commands and this is the command to write the text to the uh, to write the text back to the computer like it will just write the text and the uh, and our uart TX pin is connected to the RS485 module and that is connected to the computer. It will automatically go back to the computer. So I copy these three commands, go back, paste it like this here. Now this output is our variable. So we just initialize the variable here. We call char because we need a string variable because the data will be in string format. And you know that in case of micro C, you do not have string like in case of Arduino here. So you have to make an array of char and an array of char is also a string. So the maximum length of the string, I make it like 50. So we can send a text of like 50 letters over this. Spaces are also counted. So it will be 50 in total. So this is the programming we just did. So delimiter is okay. Now, okay, this means that any data that you write from the computer will only be received if there is an okay in the end. As soon as you send an okay, the data will be received, else it will not be received. So I click on build. Okay, it's built. I click on build again it's built again okay that's perfect now guys uh, we go to our picket 3 programmer tool this is the picket 3 programmer tool okay erase it if there is any code already i just erase it it's erased i click on file import hex file this is the file we just created i click on write okay the new file is being written let's go to the hardware okay this is the hardware let's write the new file wait okay it's done 
now we power up the circuit using a picket 3 it's powered up now see that the difference no no led is blinking it means no data is being sent because we have programmed it in such a way that only the data will be sent whatever will be received first we have to send something from the computer so we go to our picket 3 programmer tool or oh sorry micro c for pick there in the tools you have this terminal called usart terminal click on it okay clear these screens clear okay now you com 10 now remember the border we said 9600 click on connect now write any text i write i write uh, hello and and end it with okay because we have set the delimiter to be okay click press send now see hello is received see what we sent is received now i write something else i just send an empty line to clear the buffer okay it's an empty line nothing now i send learning microcontrollers like this and click on send this okay is like a full stop here because we have set it as a delimiter click on send okay we received the learning send again learning learning okay okay so our buffer is not big enough to get both so we send learning and then we send micro controllers like this I click on send okay now we received something but it's still not big enough so we just have to play with the coding okay okay i clear the space and i send an empty line so there is an empty line and then I send and see we got an end after an empty line see it is working now I said something called hello okay now it is greater than the buffer we set so to we can resolve this issue like so you just have to increase the size I make it like uh, 128 so no issue with that this pick has a lot of memory so okay it gives an error we make it like 80 okay that's fine okay for the 128 we are using i think the free version okay not enough ram so it is bigger than that this pick can endure so this will be fine 80 will be fine so or we just make it 32 that will also be fine okay right now you understand that what is the purpose of this so we just go to the URT terminal and play with the code further so this is how you do it now you see that the communication is working communication is working like a charm I said hello it says okay okay uh, I said a it will send a I give some space and send a it will do the same I send B it will be fine usually we just need this type of text like this so this is it so if you have a problem in sending longer digit just increase the border rate. border rate is increased and the string size is increased of the receiver buffer that's all you need so you can play with the code i will give you this code uh, with this lecture so you will have no issue with that so guys this is it i hope you guys learned something from this video thank you very much for your time we'll see you in the next video goodbye until then